Welcome to the Traction 3 video tutorial. Part 1 Hardware Setup and Project Management. When you launch Traction 3 for the first time, you will be greeted by the first run wizard, where you can set up traction to deal with your audio and MIDI hardware. The first page relates to your audio hardware, and the most important setting is Wave Device at the top, which determines what type of driver is used to communicate with your audio interface. If you are using a PC, you should choose an ASIO device if one is available, and on the Mac choose Core Audio. If you have the correct driver selected, you should see a list of all your audio outputs, followed by a list of all your audio inputs. These can be enabled or disabled by clicking on the icon, and one of your outputs can also be designated as the default. I used my first pair of analog outs, which are routed to my studio monitors, but if you monitor from your digital output, you should choose that instead. The sample rate can usually be left at the default 44.1 kHz, as this is the correct sample rate for audio CDs. Doubling this to 88.2 kHz is a good choice for high resolution recordings that are destined for CD, as it makes sample rate converting to 44.1 kHz relatively easy. However, if you are producing the soundtrack for a DVD video, you might be better off using 48 or 96 kHz. All the settings made here can be changed at any time from Traction's settings page, so if you are in any doubt, feel free to leave it at 44.1 for now. The latency setting defines the total processing delay of the system. In other words, the delay between pressing a note on your MIDI keyboard and hearing the sound from a plug-in synth, the delay on an audio signal that is being monitored through Traction's mixing engine, and the delay between adjusting a parameter on screen and hearing the resulting change. The smaller the value you select here, the shorter the delay will be, but if you set it too low, you may start to hear clicks and pops in the audio as your system struggles to keep up. The best setting for this depends partly on your system and partly on how you use your system so feel free to leave it as it is for now and experiment with different settings as you start to use traction in earnest. The sample rate and latency fields will only work if the drivers allow it. If not, you will need to click the Show ASIO Control Panel button to make adjustments using the driver's interface. It's usually wise to click Restart Device after changing these settings. The next page lists all your MIDI input devices, and you can enable any that you wish to appear in Traction's edit page. Likewise, the next page lists MIDI output devices, and the one you designate as the default will be used to preview MIDI files in the project management page. Next up we have the option to register Traction. If you have a Traction license, press the Unlock button to either register online or to use a key file downloaded on another computer. Otherwise just click Next to run Traction in demo mode for the time being. When you hit Finish you will be taken to Traction's project management page and this is the first thing you will be greeted with whenever you launch Traction in future. If you switch to the Settings tab, you can change your mind about any of the audio settings you chose in the wizard. You can also define which of your audio inputs and outputs are treated as stereo pairs and which are dual mono, and you can give all your inputs and outputs friendly alias names to indicate what hardware is connected to them. Switching to the MIDI settings allows you to name your MIDI inputs and outputs in the same way. Now switch back to the Projects page. Here you have an Active Projects folder on the left, which can contain your works in progress, and a Library Projects folder, which can contain anything you want to reuse in several other projects, such as sample libraries. Each project contains all items associated with that project, and these are organised into subfolders for recorded or imported files, rendered or exported files, associated QuickTime movie files, and at the top of the list, the edits, which is the name Traction gives to a song arrangement. 
After first installing Traction, there should be several demo projects in the Active Projects folder. If you select one of them and highlight an audio clip, you should be able to play it from the Properties panel at the bottom of the page. If you double click and edit, it will open in a third tab. We can now click the play button with the mouse or press the space bar to start playback and hear the demo song. The cursor indicates current playback position and can be moved by left clicking on the background. By default, the pop-up help option will be enabled, so hovering your mouse over different parts of the screen will produce a brief description of the object or button. You can toggle this option on or off by pressing F11 if you find it intrusive, or you can opt to have a longer delay before it pops up via the help menu. If we make a change to this edit, such as rearranging a couple of tracks, and then switch back to the projects page and double click another edit, we are prompted to save the current one. This is because Traction can only have one edit open at a time. However, if we copy an object such as a track to the clipboard using the usual Ctrl plus C key command and then switch back to the project page, we can see that the clipboard section in the bottom right corner now shows one item of type track. The contents of this clipboard remain intact when you open another edit, so you can paste objects into different edits or even different projects if you need to. You can also view the clipboard contents from the edit page via the browser menu. It's up to you how you organise your work of course, but as a general rule it is good practice to create a new project for each new song. New projects can be created by clicking the New Project button, or by right-clicking a folder and choosing Create a New Project. You will then be prompted for a name and will be given the options to choose a location for the project directory and a template. Traction will automatically create a new folder on your hard drive with the project name and will also create a blank edit with the name of the project followed by Edit 1. You can create as many edits as you need for each project and you can duplicate edits, perhaps to create multiple mixes of the same song. You can add comments to these edits by typing into the description field of the properties panel. If you use the save as function to save an edit with a different file name, the newly created edit will show in the project list along with the original. This also works if you choose a different directory in which to save the file, because the project list shows all files associated with that project, not merely the files in the project directory. Edits can also be saved as templates via the Save menu, with an option to include any clips, so you can reuse your setup for future projects. Projects can be closed via the right-click menu. This does not delete the project from your hard drive, it simply removes it from the list, and the project can be reopened at any time via the Open Project button in the bottom left corner. You can then either browse to a specific Traction project file, or you can search an entire directory for projects. New folders can be created via the Create Folder button, and can be named to help you organise different types of project. Subfolders can be created using the Create Subfolder button in the Folders Properties panel. And projects can be dragged and dropped from one folder to another. This does not change the actual project directories on your hard drive, so you can freely rearrange your list of works in progress in any way that is convenient. Projects can be exported via the Export Project button in the Properties panel. This will save everything in the project, either to a single Traction Archive file with optional data compression for the audio, or as separate files in a specified directory. This is a useful way of preparing a project for backup or transfer to another computer.
if we select an edit, we also find an option to export just that edit. This works in the same way as the project export, except only the audio files associated with that edit are included. The handle size parameter determines whether you include the entire original audio files or only the sections that are actually used in the edit. If you opt to use handles, only the used parts of the audio are included, but with a little bit extra at the start and end of each clip to allow the edits to be adjusted later on. We also have an option to include files from library projects. If your library projects are already safely backed up, you can reduce the archive file size by not including those files. To import an archive, simply select the relevant project and click the Import Material button. The Find Orphan Clips button below it can help you to tidy up a project by displaying only the audio files that are not used in any of the edits. You can then select these files, either individually or altogether using Ctrl plus A, and you can remove them from the project while leaving the actual files intact, or you can permanently delete the source files from your hard drive. Alternatively, you can select and edit and press the Find Referenced Material button, and Traction will display only the audio files used in that edit. You can also search all or some of your active projects for keywords. The Options menu in the bottom left corner allows you to hide the folders if you wish, and to choose which of the item's properties are displayed. Clicking on the title bar of a column will reorder the items according to the information in that column, and you can drag the divisions between columns to resize them. Renaming items in the project page may or may not change the actual file name, depending on your settings. Switch back to the Settings tab and choose User Interface on the left. The Rename Mode field has three different options. If you choose Always Rename Source File, then renaming an edit in the Project Management page will also change its source file name. This will not affect any edits that use that file, as Traction is clever enough to keep track of the changes but it may be a problem if you have other applications referring to the same files. Choosing the Never Rename Source File option allows you to rename items in the project page without changing the actual file name at all. You can compromise by choosing to only rename Source File if it is in the project directory. Alternatively, you can press the button to the right of the File Name field and point the item to a different source file entirely, rename the source file, or open the directory. If you choose to rename the file, you will be asked whether you want the item name to change to match. Back on the settings page, on the file settings tab, there is also an audio clip import field. Here you can choose whether imported audio files should always be copied to the project directory or only if they are not on a local drive. The default setting will pop up a dialog each time. Back in the user interface tab you can launch the colour editor where you can choose from various preset colour schemes, load up schemes created by other users and if you are that way inclined, modify them or create your own. The colour editor can also be launched from the edit page by holding Ctrl, Shift and C.